Oh, makes sense. All right, we're not going to I'll do anything right now. I'll give you all hand jobs if you want. I, I don't care. <laughs> I, it doesn't matter. I don't even care. Well, let's let's tape it live. Ange giving hand jobs to everybody. I don't care. Record this. <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> okay. Thank God. Yeah, we can start. You can start whenever, thank, Mike. Thank God right. we got that. <laughs> what is Ange doing? I'm giving out hand jobs. Why? Well, I'm not working. So I thought, you know, make everybody happy. And on that note, welcome to Friday at 4.20. We are so pleased to have you joining us for a very special edition of this Friday at 4.20. It's a new leaf that we have turned here uh, on the show, and I want to share a little bit of news uh, with you uh, with regard uh, to uh, Friday at 4.20, which you can no longer hear on the radio. Um, it's uh, not going to be heard on, Fri on 2820 anymore since I no longer work at 2820 anymore. And okay. you know what? Fine, I'm okay. The fact that I lost my job is all right. I don't like to go by the term unemployed. I'm just calling myself a stand-up comic now. <laughs> same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> as far as I can tell, it may be the same thing. Uh, it is great to be with you. I'm Mike Neighbors, of course, the host of Friday at 420, which will continue on every uh, week. Friday at 4.20, you'll be able to see the show on Facebook. And, of course, you can always go and listen to previous episodes on any of your favorite, favorite streaming services. You can download previous episodes of Friday at 4.20. And one of our guests was on a previous episode, and we've ha we have him back because we loved him so much. It was so much fun. Uh, but before we get to that, let's get to the rest of our panel. So, as usual, we always like to say hello to our good friend, Mr. Patrick Capolino. Buongiorno. Well, Patrick, how are you? I'm I'm good. I'm I'm doing okay. Well? Yeah, I keep them well. I spend most of my day dealing with my uh property management company, but <laughs> other than that, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, they're terrible. I'll call uh, oh, them out. Oh, Medallion. You don't own a property management no. company. You're dealing the, with one that you're having that a that I live in. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna <laughs> say it almost seemed like you had a job. No, no, not okay. me. <laughs> I'm doing Olas. <laughs> Not having a job. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, speaking of Manolas, let's say hello to him, Mr. Manolas Zantanos. Ticanis, Mike, how you doing? Take an E, buddy. How are you? Good. I was, uh, I'm, just very ha I'm just very happy to see Angelo, to tell you the truth. I I'm surprised you didn't make fun of me. Usually he just makes fun of the way I speak Greek. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he will. We haven't, we haven't introduced him yet, Manolas. Okay. Okay. Uh, before we get to that, Manolis, I just want to say, since I don't have a job, oh, right? Yeah. We currently don't have a job. Angelo's. Oh, I, uh, I'm on hold for a survey. Is this an Air Canada survey? <laughs> Your seats are small, and the food sucks. Anything else you want to know? Oh, it's the 420 podcast. <laughs> Ladies. With Mike, Patrick, and Manolis. <laughs> Everybody say hello to our good friend, Angelo Zaroka. Hi, guys. Sorry, guys. My wife, was. I, she goes, why don't you come inside and do the pot? The, as well, I want to sit outside and have a smoke. But there's the, the, the trash companies picking up the garbage, and there's a, the gardeners have these uh, vans with no mufflers on them, panel vans. I don't want to go there. Anyway, <laughs> Angelo, how are things in, in Los Angeles? That's where you currently are and how, where you've been living out this pandemic. How are things with you, my friend? Well, I'll tell you this, Mike. The weather has been great. <laughs> it's 82 <laughs> degrees, all right? But this Nazi communist state being run, we've been on lockdown, just like Canada and other places. And I don't know what to tell you. I'm, I'm displeased with how they're running the place, but the weather's good. So you kind of forget about it until you go to bed again. So it's one of those weird, that's only saving grace here, Mike, is uh, it's 83 degrees today and sunny. That's the only thing you got going That's the only you. thing. I, 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 I wanted to, nothing's <laughs> open. No comedy clubs are open. No theaters are open. They just opened the patios. Uh, I can't have sex with my wife without wearing a mask and Purelli. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I just I, I forget about it, man. I, I just I'm just going with the flow, fellas. I'm going with the flow. Listen, Angelo, before we uh, jump into our game mm -hmm. and start 
playing along here. Uh, we just wanted to say from the gang at Friday at 420, thank you so much because you put a good word in uh, with uh, um, uh, what's Russell. his name again? Russell. <laughs> Russell Peters. Russell Peters. Yeah, the biggest <laughs> comedian in the world. You put a good like, like you put your name in with uh, uh, Muskrat, uh, Rabbit, uh, Possum, uh, Russell Peters. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was a terrible time to blank, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it was perfect time to blank. <laughs> you put a good word in for us. Russell came on the show; it was awesome. Yeah. But we, it all started with you, Angelo. Thank you so much for doing that for well, us. Get, I was at his place and I said, "Hey, man, it's Manolis' show. You know, he's with Mike and those guys." He goes, "Yeah, was it fun?" I said, "Yeah, man, you should do it." He goes, "All right." And sometimes <laughs> it's, it's funny how a friend tells you. Yeah. And he yeah. goes, okay, I'll do it. You know, I love Russell. So, I mean, but you know, Russell, I think when, when you get the, you know, if you can get him on one on one, it's okay, but it's all the people around him and stuff, right? So. Mm-hmm. It's hard uh, to get to him. I said to, to Manolis, we, we had to have Angelo back because you were a blast, as I recall as well. Uh, we had some time talking with you. So, uh, so what do you say we get into our game? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, we don't have the Plinko board anymore, but I shuffled the uh, the, the topics. We have general topics that we're going to uh, share with our guests here, and they can okay. share their thoughts. Uh, and here for the very first uh, topic on this Friday at 420 uh, with our good friend Angela Zorkas. Angela, this one for you. What trait do you hope to pass on to your kids? What is the trait that you have that you are most cherished that you want to pass on to your kids? Well... The, the one trait I want to pass on to them is uh, tenacity. I don't, want, I don't want my daughter to give up. You know, I, the, I think it doesn't matter what skill set you have, and it doesn't matter what you want to do in life. That doesn't matter. Uh, I just want her to, if you want to do something, go ahead and do it. I'll fully support you, but be tenacious about it. Just keep doing it. To be, to be, you know, I, I think it's so important for people because, I think this generation now, a lot of people are losing their confidence and their ability to, to, to fit. And I think, who cares about what people think? Just do it. So I, I want to pass on my tenacity to my kids. Uh, that's 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 one that maybe doesn't jump to people's minds right away when, you, when you're when you asked such a question. I think it's an awesome one. Is it your tenacity that you think got you sort of where you are and you just kept, you just would not take no for an answer, right? <clears throat> 100%. People told me I sucked. They still tell me I suck. You can go on my YouTube channel. You still suck. They all think I'm Rob Ford or Chris Farley. I'm getting, uh, so I'm like, dude, I'm not Rob Ford and I'm not Chris Farley. I'm Angel Tarukas. But it does as I'm talking to you, I can see comments popping up. It's so weird. But you know what? I don't give a shit. Because to me, I'm like, you know what? The people that love you will love you. And I worry and I concentrate on those people. And I say this, even the young comics, I go, everybody's going to try to knock you off your rocker, right? So to me, it's like, it, it, I know it's um, more of an emotional thing because your brain's logical and emotional, but the tenacity is what gets us through comedy. I mean, look, Manolis is living proof, man. I mean, he he, he just goes and goes. He's, he's like a little energizer bunny. And, 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 pa- and I know Patrick's there doing Italian festivals in Ottawa. I saw him busting tables at Mama Teresa's that he's doing open spots at Yuck Yucks. But that's what it is. Like, I, I always tell people, if you're not tenacious, man, it doesn't matter what you do. Athlete, uh, uh, architect, a comic, whatever it is, you're never going to achieve it. You just got to keep doing it. So I don't give a shit what people think. Just do it. I, you know what? Awesome answer. There's no way the other two guys are going to come up with an answer as good. No way. We're going to no try. They're, they're not as smart as me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. All right. Manoli, you got tenacity in spades, dude. You have never given up. You have never backed down. You have kept going on what you perceive as your dream. You have never ceased yes. to keep striving for it. You have more tenacity than most people that I know. But what trait do you want to pass on to your progeny should you have kids? Um, Hopefully, if they could have none of my genes, uh, hopefully, if, like... This, the woman tricks me to thinking that it's my kid <laughs> and it's not yours. it's not my kid i could probably raise someone else's kid way better than mine so 
that's really the hope and the wish that I foresee for my child. But I will say something that I do. Th I was literally, it's funny, like, and just kind of definitely touched on what I was thinking today. I was literally thinking about this today. I don't know why it went in my brain, but I remember when I was a lifeguard, I, uh, I was guarding a swim meet and there was like a thousand, I was like all the schools from all the city was whole city of Hamilton was there competing. They're about like, they're all like 10 year old, 10 years old, nine years old kind of kids. And one kid was swimming from the other, from the shallow end to the deep end. It was a relay race. And he was like five strokes away from the end. And I, cause he just, I'm, I'm guarding and he's like right there in front of me. There's a thousand kids watching and he stops and he stops, looks at me. He goes like, I can see he's like ready to like drown. He's like, I can't make it. And I'm like, I go, I, I, and he looks right in my eyes and I look right at him. I'm like, you're fine. Keep going like this. And he pulls three more strokes and he makes it. And, and it, he was literally ready. If I would have just gave him a flutter board, he would have just gave up. But, but I, 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 I willed his, his energy to keep going. And two reasons. Number one, I knew like, uh, I didn't want to get wet. And number two, <laughs> I didn't want I didn't want him to drown in front of a thousand kids and that for him to be his memory. And it, I was thinking, like, it's just definitely been something stuck in the brain, my brain for my whole life where I keep saying to myself now, you're fine. Just keep going. Yeah. But tell what tell them about the other four kids you did that to. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't make it. Well, I, that, those, those, are, those are still pending lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. You're fine. They're dead they're fine. now. They're dead. <laughs> Buddy, it was... Patrick Coppolino, what trait do you most want to pass on to your lovely daughter? Uh, I'm going to have to go a trait that I, I hope she doesn't have, uh, which is uh, I my whole life, I just I, I learn everything the hard way. Like the fact that she exists is me learning things the hard way. Uh, everything like Manolas can attest to this that no one has told me not to do things and reasons why not to more than Manolas has and I do them anyways and he's always right yeah <laughs> like my parents like so I really hope she just listens and believes what she's being told and doesn't have to find things out the hard way all the time like I did I don't even I... give Patrick advice anymore <laughs> Because if I don't want him to do something, I, I feel like I have a better chance of him not doing it if I tell him nothing. Well, you know what? This would not be Friday at 420 if Patrick uh, refused to answer the question. So well done, Patrick. <laughs> uh, this Friday at 420, don't forget, uh, our show is always available on the stream, a brand new stream every Friday at 420 on Facebook. You can check that out. You can always follow up later on our Friday at 420 Facebook page. And uh, our guest is Angelo Z Our topic, this one is going to Manolis. Ta Manolis, you're going to start us off on this topic. What's the best cracker? The best, best cra cracker? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, I would definitely not say I'm a connoisseur with cracker, of, of crackers, right? But I just remember the square one with all the holes in it. And uh, I, I don't know if, it, if there any of them are the best because at my house, my parents would never, growing up as I think, uh, your with European parents, they just didn't. They thought like cookies and chips were like you don't need that. It's not food, so there would be always crackers left, and I would just be like, like, like wanting to eat something more. Like, like I felt like oh crackers, this will be like a dessert. This will be like a treat, and then you're like you're just dry and you're yeah, like you can't thirsty. breathe and thirsty and like and I just remember thinking I hate these crackers. Why can't I just have cookies like everybody else? So. The that. square ones with all the holes in them, would that be just your regular saltine? Is that what you're... Yeah, yeah. that's what he's thinking of, like the premium plus or whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> the red box. <laughs> all right, Angelo, we're calling on you to bring some culture to this. What's the best cracker, Angelo? Oh, Triscuits. Oh, those look, those look delicious. How'd you get, how did you have those ready? <laughs> he was eating them before the show. You see, tenacity... <laughs> I knew Mike was going to ask that question, and I know you're all freaking out. As Manolas was speaking, I text my wife, they have Triscuit Tzatziki flavor. Huh? That's awesome. That's amazing. Triscuit Tzatziki. These taste like Tzatziki sauce, Triscuits. I think Mike's oh. going to fall off his chair. Oh, yeah. Well, just the fact that you have the sample box in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, Angela, Triscuits, uh, look, Ritz Cracker is obviously maybe the 
most famous cracker ever. I'd say Ritz, but I got to tell you, Triscuit tzatziki flavored crackers, man. This is my new crack. My new That's crack it. for crackers is Triscuit tzatziki crackers. Is Angelo, do you tzatziki. Dessert? Look at that in Manoli. Tzatziki. Yeah. Anything specific you want to put on those crackers? And what kind of what kind of cheese would you be putting on that? You know, no, I will put. What I do is I take, I make a Greek salad <laughs> cracker, Mike. So I take the tzatziki cracker. Think of this: crumbled feta, kalamata, where Manolis's family's from, kalamata, yep. tapeno, tapeno, the 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 the, the uh, smushed olives, which are the best olives in the world. So I put tzatziki cracker, feta, uh, olives, and a little bit of crumbled <laughs> tomato, a little bit of oregano. And a dash of olive oil, Greek salad on a fucking cracker. I feel, I feel like you're talking dirty at me right now. <laughs> I used to I used to put my crackers in my ice cream cones. I never cream. had I never had ice cream too, so I just put the crackers in the ice cream cone and ate them together. Yeah, Greek salad on a cracker. Let me tell you, I made them. We smoked some really good weed. And then I made these crackers. They were, they go, what are you making? I go, Greek salad on a cracker. They went nuts, bro. Oh my and one friend's a chef. He goes, how the hell did you do that? I go, I got high. And I took the Triscuit. <laughs> and just it, all the stuff was in my kitchen. And I just made about eight or nine of them. Gone. Oh. Two, three seconds, they were gone, guys. <laughs> that is fantastic, Andrew. Well, great answer. Uh, Patrick Coppolino, you got to follow that up, buddy. You're a foodie. Oh, man. What's the best cracker? Uh, I think they're called Veggie Thins. Midgy oh, thins? No, veggie thins. Yeah, oh, I think there's thins. there's wheat thins and veggie thins, but the veggie ones taste better. And uh, that with like cream cheese, like a herb and garlic cream cheese. Okay. Any cream cheese, really, but herb and garlic, yeah. That's my go to uh, cracker. Yeah, veggie thin with some herb and garlic cream cheese. Nice. Yeah. All right, boys. Friday at 420 continues. Angelo Zurich is our special guest. Angelo, a quick question for you. How do people check you out on, on YouTube? Just, just hey, we're looking for you your name. What? My YouTube channel under Angelo Tsaroukas. So go to Angelo Tsaroukas, T-S-A-R-O-U-C-H-A-S, Tsaroukas, Angelo Tsaroukas. On YouTube, there's a whole bunch of stuff up on YouTube. <clears throat> or uh, Instagram, Angelo Tsaroukas, or even on uh, Facebook, Angelo Tsaroukas, uh, Twitter, Angelo Tsaroukas, LinkedIn, Angelo Tsaroukas. That's it. He's because now we can't name shame anymore. So I left it full Greek. <laughs> Forget it. No name. They say you can't name, we can't name shame. I'm okay, I'm not shortening my name. That's it. It's Tarukas. <laughs> All right, Angelo, thank you. Uh, we are going to continue to uh, let people know where they can find your amazing work because you've got a, quite a body of it. Uh, this topic now for Patrick Coppolino. Patrick, what actor or actress are you surprised that anyone likes? Uh, or uh, actor, are you surprised you always look at them and you go really people like this oh that's a good question I don't yeah. Know. Uh, it's yeah. A, it's I'm a sure nice I have an answer for that or do you hate? <laughs> I guess uh, one thing that, that stood out in more recent years was uh, I used to I used to love uh, Jennifer Aniston on Friends <laughs> <laughs> like you don't want to bang her anymore, little boy. Uh, no, I'd still do that. But like as an actress, she's when you rewatch that show, I think she's the worst one on that show. Oh, like it, I'm shocked she was the one that became a movie star. I mean, besides the way she looks and stuff. Like That's why acting. it's important to be hot. <laughs> yeah, she's, right. yeah. I think True. she's the worst. Yeah. She's not a very good actress. But yeah, she's she's been Excellent. funnier in recent stuff. That's but. a good answer. Uh, uh, Manoli, what do you? What about you? What actor or actress do you think? Are you always surprised? That that people love so much. I think there's a list, but the one I think that can pop up my brain right now is this uh, uh Ben is it Ben Affleck? Well, he didn't he, he played Batman at one point, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that that dude. It's like I don't I don't think he like listen, I don't think he sucks. I just don't understand why certain like I don't understand why he's as famous as he is because I don't know, he just really he always really just seems miserable, man. <laughs> he doesn't really seem like he even wants to be there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like he just like every time I see him, it's like you know, it's like when you, it's like some guy that's sick of being married. You know, it's like he's like, ah. <laughs> like I'm like, what happened, dude? Did you lose your dog? Like you're rich and famous. Cheer up. 
That's a good good answer. I like all that. Right, all right. Great. He always he always a bit of a pouty face kind of thing going yeah, on. Yeah, like he's just like, <laughs> what happened, dude? Like I'm t- I'm telling you, your life's ten times better than mine. All right, and I'm yeah. happy. Well, With didn't Matt you lose J Lo? Matt Damon has a better life. Uh, oh, for sure. Uh, Ed, Zerukas, you know quite a few uh, famous Hollywood people. Is I there, do. Is there somebody that I, we don't want to throw under the bus? But is there somebody you think? You know, I'm a little shocked that they're as successful as they are. Dave Franco. <laughs> James Franco's brother. I don't get it. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but dude, have you seen the movies he's in? I don't get it. I mean, your brother's famous, and then there's Dave Franco. It just it bothers me. <laughs> the face bothers me. Everything fucking bothers but, me. But I'm sure. I'm sure he's a nice guy. I don't me- know. You know what it is? I just don't know, man. I just Dave Franco. It's like. Whatever. What? I, I, I've i seen his movie. Like I say, his, I've seen his movies. It's like, okay, whatever. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> he must be related with Ben Affleck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but is, is he there because, because of his brother mostly, though? Well, there's nepotism, right? I'll tell you right now, if his brother wasn't James Franco, if he was like, well, it was like Dave Smith, who's a caterer in Ottawa, uh, you know, I mean, I... I Look at some of it, like IMDb, some of his films, watch one or two and then ask me if I'm wrong, you know, but I've heard through the networks, he's a nice guy. Okay. Angelo, do you have anything you're currently either working on or getting ready to, to, to work on or any projects? <clears throat> you might no, they, here's because of a, a couple of projects got delayed, but there's one film that got released a few months ago in Canada that hasn't made it here yet that I was in. It's called uh, His Master's Voice. Oh. And it's on Roger's demand. Either Roger's or Bell. Because my friends are calling me. I'm in the uh, trailer commercial in Canada. But funny enough, we filmed that in Canada. So it's in Europe, Japan, and Canada. But it's not in America yet. And I play a Michael Moore character oh, cool. who's like a conspiracist who profits from it about spontaneous combustion. <laughs> A Hungarian scientist thinks his dad's still alive. It's all program. It's like a sci-fi thing. And it all uh, really happy? Is it real? Is it true? Based on a documentary, allegedly some of this is true. Oh. Um, and I, you know, and 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 and, and I'm, I'm such a well-known actor that nobody fucking tells me when they're gonna release it or when it's. It, I gotta get my friends calling me, going, "Hey, man, are you in this film? Uh, what film?" And they go, "You know, his master's voice." I go, "Yeah." How do you know? Well, it's, they're showing it in Canada. And nobody, <laughs> you have no idea. That's usually how we find out, guys. Dude, I didn't know you were in Mad Men. And I was just watching yeah. it. I was watching it because, like, the first COVID, I'm like, Mad Men was on Netflix. I'm like, perfect. And then your scene came in, came on, and I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I forgot, uh, Manolis. I forgot I was on Mad Men. It's how long it's been. <laughs> People, Dude. it's funny because they keep playing. They keep playing Harold and Kumar. I get calls, and they keep playing the Prince and Me is probably the one they play the most with Julia Stiles. Okay, so not in Toronto. And they, I keep getting checks from them, so it's great. And <clears throat> Mad Men keep sending me checks, and and Blue Mountain State, and whatever you know. And and then all of a sudden, you know, the the, the, the his master's voice, some you, weird fucking film. Nobody tells me shit. You killed it on uh, on that scene in Mad Men, though. You were like, you looked like you were supposed to be there. Like it, it was. I was so, I was so happy when I saw yeah, that. Yeah, nineteen sixties New York, huh? crazy. Sick, dude. It was so yeah. sick, bud. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Manolis, bro. Manolis wasn't surprised that you'd forgotten you were on Mad Men since it was shot in the sixties, as far as he's concerned. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <It's> real. <laughs> I mean, uh, Angelo, I, a quick, quick, another quick question just before we get back to the topics, because I, I did want to ask this. I, I just, I missed the boat the first time it was out. I just recently started watching the TV show uh, Entourage. Right. Right. Which is a, a fabulous show. I, I like it. Yeah. Oh, yes. I, I'm just curious from your perspective, how, 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 how real is, how, like, how much of that is kind of, kind of really what it, what it's like? It's real. Yeah. I, 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 I've seen it in different scenarios. Uh, Russell's a good example. Perfect. Or example. some other people that I know. And what happens? What happens, guys, is that when you're in Hollywood, it's like there's a team, and the team goes with you. 
So what happens is that everybody's got a role on it. So you have the superstar, which is uh, Vincent Chase, right? Yeah. And then you have the brother, the brother who was on Viking Quest, like Kevin <laughs> Dillon, who was something, which is based on Mark Wahlberg and Donnie Wahlberg, right? That's based yeah. on those. And then you have like Turtle, and then you have like E, the manager who's <clears throat> his friend, his you know, brother, and that and you see that scenario all the time. So sometimes when people want to get something done in Hollywood, you may not necessarily reach out to I'll give an example of how it worked. So I'm hanging out at Russell's house. I'm, I'm not bragging because you, since you asked the question. So I'm in, I'm having cigars now at Russell's house because Russell's smoking them now uh, to calm his life down. He's blaming <laughs> me for it. He's blaming. So uh, D.L. Hewley shows up. Cedric the Entertainer shows up. Uh, Dwayne Martin, <laughs> Dwayne Martin, who's best friends with Will Smith. And then we're having stogies and then Guy Tory and, um, and his brother, um, the other uh, comic, either famous guys, Joe Torrey and Guy Torrey, and he's a filmmaker. And then Will Smith shows up. So, and now what happens? We're hanging out, and then Dwayne will reach out, let's say, to Will. Yo, what's up? What are you doing? And he lives nearby, right? They're all living out in Calabasas. Oh, we're just at Russell's hanging, and we're just hanging out. Oh, uh, man, I'll come by and pass by the crib. And then he shows up. Yeah, I'll have a stogie. I'll have a drink. And then it kind of just happens. But then there's like, there's a guy with him who's driving, or there's another guy that shows up. Like they, they all kind of have uh, the gang. entourage. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the team. So <clears throat> it's just that's how it is, right? And then we're bullshitting and then you're having a good time. But it's like, it doesn't, not that they don't, not that they're not friends. Like all those guys are not friends. But, you know, if you go to, Ru especially Russell's house, you know, I, I met Ray Parker Jr who's ghostbusters yes. sitting there and i'm and i saw and what happened when i pulled up to russell's house i saw the plate said rp jr now russell has the same initials right and i thought oh shit oh, he yeah. bought a new he bought a new porsche cayenne which isn't unusual for him and i go inside and, I, and then and then russell hey man look who's here he goes it's ray Par i knew who he was as soon as i walked in i go ray parker jr <laughs> you know? and then and then you have like chuck zito president of the hell's angels he's hanging out <laughs> ray parker jr is hanging out so you got hell's angels you got who you gonna call get jiggy with it fucking all there i mean it's just the most bizarre weirdest things that happen sometimes so it's really it's kind of cool but it all happens with an on like that's part of it so you see yeah. the you see the team that happens because they hang around together because there's a lot of crazy people here well, I appreciate the insight. I, I, I was watching the show, and, and it's kind of, yeah, they go everywhere together. And you're, like, kind of going, that yeah. seems awful. Was this but guy there? Kind of the way it rolls, man. <laughs> was, uh, it, was it Anthony Quinn? Who is that? Some that Greek some Greek actor. What's his name? Well, let me see. That's Anthony Quinn, right? Yeah, you know, Anthony Quinn is not Greek. He's, oh, he's not? I work with him. He's Mexican. <laughs> he's some... Mexican. He, Hold on, he's Mexican Irish and he's famous. What movie is he famous for, Manoli? I want to see if you know. I don't know. You're a disgrace to the Greek the... race of people <laughs> on this planet. Something of a <laughs> did he play? I guess he played a Greek guy in some movie, I guess. Jesus Christ, <laughs> Manoli. I bet you Patrick and Mike know the answer. Zorba what the Greek. Zorba, see, Zorba the Greek. You didn't even know Malaka, I dude. I said some you. Greek movie. I was close. Uh, I, someone, I just uh, met some people. dude. Someone uh, just gave me gave me this. He's like, "Oh, you're Greek." He used to own this like a uh, souvenir shops thing, like antiques and stuff. But he goes, hey, "It's his actual autograph." So he gave it to me. I just got it the other day. <laughs> I worked with him once. I worked with him with Sylvester Stallone on Avenging Angelo. Well, tell him I have his autograph. Stallone. And <clears throat> Madeline Stowe, I worked with him with Billy Gardell from like, Mike That's where I met Billy in Toronto. I worked with him. He speaks Greek. He's he passed away now. Oh, that's maybe well. that's maybe the most famous movie ever made by Greeks. Zorba the Greek. If he was never even Greek? Sunday. No. Oh, oh well, that's that, weird. That wouldn't pass in today's Hollywood using a non-Greek to play Zorba the Greek. Of course. Yeah, oh. they wouldn't let that. <laughs> They'd lose their nut over that. Well, I got his I, autograph. Everybody, everybody thought, 
Everybody thought he was Greek and he spoke Greek and he had a place in Greece. 80, so, when I met him, he was 86 years old. He had 11 kids from five women. Guy's a stud. Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, you're you're watching Friday at 420, and we appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, Manolis and Patrick and our good friend Angela Zarukas. Uh, it is time for a, another topic. Uh, and this one is uh, all you guys have spent some time on the road. Uh, what's the first thing you do when you get into a hotel room? Manolis... <laughs> The first thing you do, you know, <laughs> I wish I, I wish I was just making this up, but I, I masturbate <laughs> like literally <laughs> the first thing I do. I, I the very yeah, literally the first thing. First thing I you know, ought what up the bed to see how, how comfortable it's going to be. You know, I put everything I put everything like on like I, I don't unpack really. I just put everything aside and then I. uh I turn on the TV and see if that girl's gone wild infomercials on, and I just pull one off right away. Oh, I just, just get it out. Yeah. Traveling is stressful, man. I have to get that out of me. If you don't get it out of you, you go crazy. I do it for mental health. That's what I do it for. I don't even. It's I don't they even don't enjoy get, it. They don't even get money from you for uh, for, for to pay for the movies. You're doing it to the to the teaser ads. Oh yeah, I'm not. One time, buddy. One time, I'm in a hotel and I was doing it. I was do, taking care of myself, and the hotel called me. And I was like, it's like, we need to come out in your room right now. And I'm thinking like they knew somehow, but they did. Uh, but obviously they didn't. And then they showed up and they're like, we, we need to go through your connecting door to the other room. I was in Edmonton yuck yucks where the hotels in this casino, it's all together. And I go, okay, go ahead. They go in and all of a sudden I hear them go, Oh, sh Oh shoot. He's dead. And I'm like, I'm like, what? Wow. Yeah, so I look in, I pretend like I pretend to be an idiot because it's easy. And I just go, hey, guys, you need any help? And the guy's like in his chair, just like, like dead. He OD'd on Percocets and Oxys. And, uh, oh. yeah, and I'm like, literally, he literally died while I was trying. There was like, like, like I was trying to please myself, and there was a dead guy in the next room. And he was, he was the headliner that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's how someone else got promoted. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick, come with us. You go into a hotel room. When they found the dead guy, was Girls Gone Wild on TV also <laughs> in his room? Yeah, that's why. That's what made me think of the story. I was I was watching Girls Gone Wild, and then I got the call, and I'm like, because I didn't. I was like so long ago. I had a flip phone because I didn't. I couldn't use my phone for like porn. I had no magazines, and I, my <laughs> brain shot for imagination. And I'm like, I'll do. And then I didn't. And the problem was when they finally took the guy away and they locked my door. I couldn't go back. I couldn't finish because it just, it was too weird. I didn't want to ruin me. I didn't want to be like, every time I need to masturbate, there's got to be a dead guy next to me, you know? <laughs> also, you did, you had a flip phone, but this was like like six years ago, wasn't it? You know, yeah, Pat, you know I had a flip phone like three years into like everybody. Was, I When I got my, when I got, went from a flip phone to an iPhone, I was, we were on iPhone 4. <laughs> For real. Think about that, Ange. Wow. Yeah, flip phone up to oh, iPhone 4. That's how far I was in. Like, just still on. I was like, in retrospect, it was amazing because it's, you know, it takes so much of our time. All right, Coppolino, give me an answer. First thing you do when you go into a hotel room. Uh, It depends if I'm hungry or not. If I'm not hungry, I'm doing what Manolis did. Uh, <laughs> But I have a phone I can use. I don't know. Yeah, dude, that's why we all laughed. As soon as you asked the question, every comic knows that's it's fine. the first thing you do when you go in the hotel. <laughs> like, yeah, you're in a new place. You're alone. Uh, no one so there I usually, to bother you? I usually do that, and then I try. I find a nice local restaurant that's not a chain in that town, <laughs> and I go get something to eat, and then I come back and do it again. All right. A Angelo Zarukas, please help help clean this thing up a little bit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go clean up after Manolis and Patrick. <laughs> so, uh, and you're as bad as us. Oh no, of course I am. I'm not saying I don't pull it off, but I I, I need it to be more intimate than you guys. I don't just <laughs> I need to get to know myself a little better. I just go in the room, pull a pants up. I, I need to build a scenario up, right? So what I do is I, I I'm like usually uh, I'll go. I, that's, I, I'm, I'm my OCD is to put everything away. Like I have like a CPAP machine, so I hook it up, 
and then I hook, I put my claws away to get that out of the way first. Cause I don't want to, you know what happens, you know, if you, if, you, if you tug one off and then you pass out, you wake up, your folds are all, your clothes are all, you know, folded and Wait, wrinkled. You need a CPAP machine to masturbate? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I need, I need you. It's, I've kind of tried it. It's weird. It doesn't, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's just weird. It doesn't, you know, with, with your CPAP. So um, I need to put stuff away. And then like Pat, so I'm, so I'm, I'm encompassing everything Manolis and Patrick said. So yes, I whack off too, but I'll, I'll have dinner first, put my stuff away. <laughs> Takes some and then, out you know, for a nice meal. And, and then, you know, I need to get in bed, uh, towel on the left, you know, TV on timer. And then, uh, you know, and then I'm just thinking about weird shit. Yeah, and then you know, and then it helps you go to bed. I do it before I go to bed because otherwise I'd be sleeping four or five times a day. <laughs> yeah, Manolis, did is it you? I won't say where it was, but didn't you use a hotel towel and then night sleep fold it back up and put it back in the bathroom? <laughs> yes, I was like, I w- and it was well, a face towel. It was a ha- Halifax, Halifax, yuck, yes. <laughs> okay, you're gonna say it. Anyway. Oh. Oh. And I was <laughs> like, <laughs> no. How about yeah? You know, well, well, yeah, I was just gonna say like this is a place where like he knows only comics are gonna be in this room. Like, yeah, so there's you know there's three rooms in the Halifax Yuck Yucks, Ange, and then like you know the main room, or yeah. no, not the headline room, but the second one, the second biggest, but it has a connecting bathroom there. So yeah. I went in that room. So what happens like you know after the Sunday I was checked out, but I was gonna be there for three more days staying with a friend. <laughs> And I hooked up with this chick at a bar and I said, you want to go back to my place? And I'm like, where is it? I'm like in the hotel. And I'm just like, I'm hoping my key still works. Okay. <laughs> Cause I'm already checked out. It's Sunday. And I picked up this chick and then it just seemed easier than me trying to go back to her place. So we went and it worked and we went in and it was already been, everything's been done. The, the maid had been there and fixed everything, new towels, new everything. And so I just brought her on into that room, got her on the bed and we, we had sex and then after we had sex, I went in the bathroom. I just like, I took one of those little hand tiles and I just wet it a little bit and I just cleaned my knob off, like you know, quickly. And I don't know why, but I just did clean my clean my dick. And then I fold it back nicely and put it back in the thing. Yeah. Or like, and because the cleaning hey, that- staff had just been there, they're not coming back. So now the next back. comedians that are coming in the next weekend would have would have just assumed it. <laughs> Hey, Manolis, was that the weekend I was there doing the theater show when you were there in Halifax? We were together. We went for uh, KODs. Uh, it could have been. It, it could have been. No, remember, we were together there. Yeah, remember, we you, me and, you, me, and uh, Tim were. Tim was there, right? Now, Tim was there too. Yeah, yeah in the song. Yeah, I remember that. You were doing yeah. some big theater theater show. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, we were there and we hung out. You know, at the the, the, the little Greek Halifax Donair. See. You're talking about whacking off, but you said Halifax, and all I thought about was those fucking awesome Donaires. Yeah. See how the mind works? See how it works? I'll tell you who the headliner was the next weekend after uh, we get off, <laughs> after we get off the air. air. Oh, listen, this, is, uh, this has been too much fun, guys. We're going to have to uh, draw it all to a close and, and leave them wanting more, as they as they say. Uh, yeah. This is... At 420 is uh, is almost done, but before we go, uh, first of all, Angelo, always a blast catching up with you, man. You're such a great Thanks, guy. Mike. A lot of laughs. Uh, please, everybody, follow uh, e- Angelo on every platform there is out there. Angelo Zaroukas. Uh Make sure you're checking it out. His stuff on YouTube is always hilarious, and we look forward to seeing you in more episodes of future TV shows and movies. Love Angelo. to. Thanks, brother. Thanks, Mike. Patrick and Manolis had a lot of fun today. Yeah. Always have fun Thanks with Manolis. I love you, dude. I, I love you, dude. I love Manolis and Patrick and you guys. It's great. This is fun, man. This doesn't, it's just we're having fun. That's what people want. <clears throat> thanks for having me yeah, on the yeah. show. Well, yeah, thank you for, doing it. Uh, uh, for us. Uh, don't forget, if you love the show, like it. Make sure you share it. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, we'll be on every Friday at 420, a live stream on Facebook. Uh, you can check us out. Uh, with new guests every week and you can always download previous episodes of the show on any of your favorite podcasting services patrick anything to say before we close things up? uh yeah just check keep checking back at uh, levityComedyclub.com. uh i'm i'm feeling that we're gonna open sooner than later if things Good. keep going, that's, going yeah. well. that's exciting yeah. you should come down edge I, you yeah, know, yeah. I gotta oh we'd love to have you right what i do a lot of fans in hamilton I yeah mean, yeah come there wherever yeah, we can, can get across 
But I, I don't want to go. What hotel do you book at Levity? Because if uh, Manolis is there the week before, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. There's actually a nice Sheridan uh, right next door. We'll keep him out of there. Okay. All right. Sounds good, man. I love to do that, Patrick. That'd be great. Yeah. For Whenever sure. it opens up, man, we'll talk. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, Manolis, what do you got to say, buddy? Uh, just uh, yeah, we're all our old episodes are on Spotify, uh, fa- Facebook, everywhere. So Friday four twenty, and uh, there's a bunch of different videos <laughs> on Facebook of Angelo Zarukis is like, 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 like one of his stories or joke that are like viral, um, viral videos. So if you just type in Angelo Zarukis on Facebook, you'll probably find one of them, and they're like really. There, you have a, you have like a handful of viral videos. With, There's a lot of them. With a, yeah, the, the, I'm not the last one this week went about a million views already wow. in five days. What was that one? Something about uh, what was no, it? Re- renting a car in Greece. Was that? I don't think you even saw that one. What was the one yeah, I just? It's a new one. My my wife Alina's been putting them up, so it's on YouTube. I just and... sh- I just shared. What was the one I just shared? I think uh, a week ago, about something about phone or Greek word or phone or something. Greek. I, I don't know. I can't, there's a couple out there, which maybe that one, or I think it's that one, renting a car in Greece. Oh, maybe that's one I shared then a week ago. Yeah, thanks, bro. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome, hey. bro. I love you. Well, make sure, you you, make sure you like and share all Angelo's stuff and, and get out there and, and help support uh, our uh, our local comedy scene here in Hamilton. And Angelo, we would love to have you here in Hamilton. We'll That'll put be you, great. Yeah, we'll celebrate. We'll celebrate and have a time. I make sure you tag me, Mike, on it so I can share the 420 with all my fan base too, right? Uh, we'll For make sure. sure to do that. Yeah, yeah make sure. Because I'll put it up. You know, I always share it. So it'll be great. That'd be fun. Thank you, everybody, for hanging awesome. out with us on this Friday at 420. It's the weekend. You know what that means. Have an awesome weekend. Woo! Bye, guys. <laughs>